Hello, this is Richard from Aficionado. Uh, today, I wanted to introduce Josh Matias. He's also known as Josh Pork Sandwich from Reef to Reef uh, Forum. He's actually very well known for his uh, thread and his tank about zoanthids and polythoas. He has one of the best zoanthid polyp tanks that I have ever seen, and I just wanted to introduce you and his tank to you guys. Josh? Hi, how are you? Okay. Um, Josh, I would like to know first, how did you get into this hobby? and what size is your tank? Uh, my tank is 125 gallons. I got into the hobby um, by watching a TV show okay. about tanks. Oh. And that's how you know me and my family wanted a tank, and this is what I was able to find. Is there is there any reason, particular reason, why you got into zoanthids? I just love the colors. There's you know such wide variety of them, and you know it's it's just you could put so many together. They're not aggressive. They're not gonna kill each other, mm -hmm. and you could just put so many colors next to each other. So it just it looks awesome. So t tell me a little bit more of a, uh, about your equipment. I see that you have a Polo LEDs running. Um, yeah. d what do you like about them? Do you think these are the most uh, best lights for the, your type of tanks? I used to have metal halides, and I noticed that my soantids used to get bigger with the metal halides. Um, with LEDs, I think they're very strong, so that's why I have the lights so high. Okay. Um, they produce a very, very strong par. Um, it's, it's, the colors on the Zoas pop more with the LEDs. Okay. With the blue attendants, the, 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 the colors pop out a little bit more, Yeah, right? they pop a lot more. Okay. But um, what do you think is the best par rate uh, for growing LEDs? Uh, usually my SOAS, I try to keep everything mm -hmm. under 200 par. I just wanted to cover all the equipments that you have in your tank. Can you tell me a little bit more about skimmer and what kind of equipment okay. you're running here? What I have is I have uh, a wet dry and I also have a small uh, 15 gallon refugium. Okay. Uh, the refugium is higher, higher and it, it gravity feeds to the wet dry. Okay. For the skimmer, I have a coral life. Uh, 125 skimmer okay. and I also have two uh, reactors one for phosphan and the other one for carbon I see and I see that you have a WP40 um, I just tank. got I used to have two tonsies and uh, I I'm trying the WP40 see how it does and so far I'm really happy with it when before I used to have two tonsies now I'm just using one WP40 on the flow, I like it. Would you say that the strong flow is important on zoanthids uh, growth? Yes. Or? Okay, so heavy flow is good for zoanthids? It's good. Uh, I think that you know, it makes their food get to them, so they don't have to, you know, they don't starve. I see. Okay. Now we're gonna talk about parameters. Josh, so on, on a polyp tank like yours, what kind, of, what kind of parameters do you keep? What kind of parameters do you check for? I usually keep my calcium at around 450. Um, my alkalinity is usually at 8, and my magnesium, it's usually at around 1,200, 1,300. Uh, I don't know why, I don't know if it's the soantids, I still don't know why, but my magnesium, it's, it's always low. I, it doesn't matter how much magnesium I add, it always, I always have problems keeping it, you know, where it should be. So you have to constantly boost? Uh, constantly. I go through two or three containers of magnesium when I only use one of calcium and, and alkalinity. And Keeping this tank for for duration of this uh, tank, um, can you tell me a little bit of the ups obstacles that you have gone through? Uh, usually, the the biggest obstacle that I went through is when I change lights. Okay. You know, it doesn't matter how long I try to acclimate the zoas to it. You know, it, it, it was hard. You know, trying to find spot for everything. I usually, uh, when I get a new coral, I usually break it in half and try to put her in different different places, and that switch was hard, you know, moving stuff. I, you know, I lost some stuff, uh, but it was most, mostly finding the spot where they were gonna be the happiest. A lot of people in the web, in the world, actually had like issues with like zoanthid spiders, uh, zoanthid flus, and other stuff like that. Have you gone through any, anything like that as well? Usually, uh, I have encountered everything that you could think of, but I usually try to take care of it before it goes in my tank. So basically, prevention. Uh, yeah, I usually use dips, I use Coral X, a lot, you know, recently uh, I started using Bayer, okay. uh, um, just trying it out, and uh, Coral Rex so far, it's been great. Okay. Bayer, I've, I haven't seen a difference, you know, but I haven't encountered that much lately. So in the, in the display, I mean, luckily so far you haven't really had anything? What I, I have a six line, and, and to me the six line, he's always pegging at stuff. Okay. 
so I'm pretty sure if there's any pest, uh, any nudies, anything, he always eats. Uh, I try, I had aptaceous, uh, and I put those nudies to eat the aptaceous. Yes. My six line ate them all, all those nudies, so I'm pretty sure he likes them. Okay. That's why I don't have them, because he eats yeah. them. I like the way that how, how is every, everything is taken care of naturally here in your tank. Uh, that's what I do usually. I have a frag tank, and that's uh, all the pest usually, you know, after dipping. Yeah. That's how they get maintained, you, just with fish, you know. I see. What kind of tips and advices can you give to the, the people that's getting into the hobby or has been in the hobby for a while or people do, who consider themselves as an expert? It's, I always tell everyone, it's water changes. You just gotta do water changes. You know, if you don't wanna be on top of, you know, checking your parameters and stuff, usually uh, just water changes. Uh, if I don't do water changes after a few weeks, I notice my soul as either getting smaller, they're not as open, you know, they're not as happy. So once I do a water change, everything just goes back to normal. That's the most important thing. At the beginning, I, you know, it's, I wouldn't dose anything. It was just water changes. That's all I would do and everything was great. I had known Josh for about two years now and you have abundance of growth in your tank. What do you do with all these, all these uh, additional growth that's just access now? I usually like keeping uh, the frags big and I keep them elevated from the rock. Okay. And when they grow, I usually just cut them. You know, just cut them and then put it on a frag tank that I have. Um, well, I just don't want everything to outgrow each other and try to kill each other. So I like seeing you know, all the different colors. Right. And if everything grows in the rock, I cannot control it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, uh, if you notice all the, all the frags are elevated. Right. I keep them on the frag. And then if they grow too much, uh, I usually just try to put it on a bigger frag. Okay. So it grows on that. Is there any tips on fragging that you could give us? You got to wear gloves. Uh, not only the salt water, you know, the, the salt juice gets on your hands and it messes up your hands. If you have a cut and you get that stuff, you could get an infection, a really bad infection. Uh, not too long ago, I was, wearing, I was wearing glasses and I dropped a rock and a little bit of juice went from the bottom of the glasses on my eye. Oh. And it, was, it got really red. It was actually the day before Halloween. So people thought, I, you know, I did it on purpose for wow. Halloween, but it got really red. Uh, I have a friend that uh, he just he needed surgery on his eye oh my uh, because he got he got zoa juice on his eye. Um, and like I said, it's you just gotta wear protection always. Yeah, that's a very important. I guess. Oh, wow. I mean, I I have only heard the stories about it, but goodness. Yeah, it's it's really bad. Uh, he 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 got the zoa juice. His eye got closed, and he had had eye surgery before in the past. So when he opened his eye with his hand, the, the, his cornea like got stuck to the back of the eyelid and stuff. So oh. he had to go to the hospital. Oh my goodness. It was bad. This has been another episode from Aficionado. Thank you for being with us today. And thank you, Josh, for introducing uh, us to your tank and to your lovely house. No problem. Thanks for coming, guys.